we're going to talk about internal energy. This is a part of you know what's a broader field called statistical mechanics. That's why I put this one here down. It looks really dangerous. And now it's our turn to study. Uh -oh. uh, okay, let's look at this. So we have an equation then for internal energy. The internal energy, to remember the uh, variable we use is U. We use that. So we're going to have this equation here for an ideal gas, and it has to be monatomic, which means it's just one element, like all argon or you know all neon or whatever, just one atom or one element. Um, and let's just look at this equation here. So it goes U equals, and just like the ideal gas equation goes, you know, uh, NR times T, except this is going to be three halves times N times R times T. Now, this is our first of our equations here that we're going to need. It's in our data booklet, remember? But uh, we can also write it in another format in case you want to use the Boltzmann constant as well. We can do that too. So we can say u is also equal to 3 halves. And we have capital N, the number of atoms uh, or number of molecules, times the Boltzmann's constant, of course, times the temperature. So just like with the ideal gas law, how we have two different versions, and that's because remember that NR equals capital N times KB. So these two, this piece right here is the same as that piece right there. So that's also a piece that's helpful to know. And now let's just make sure we remember these are here. So what's the eternal energy measured in? Oh yeah, it's joules. Uh, temperature is going to be in Kelvin. Uh, this is just the number of moles, number of molecules. So actually, there we go. We're all set. Let's actually look at an example. Let's put this into context here. So we want the internal energy. So we want we want the letter U here. Okay, we want the internal energy. And right away before doing anything else, that means we probably just need to write down this equation. And so NR or NKBT. Right, so we have that one, right? So U equals well three halves times N times R T. And we also have equals three halves times capital N times KB times T. Let's try to figure out then which of these should we use. We know the number of molecules. Is that the number of moles? No. We know this value right here. This value right here is capital N. And if we know that's capital N, then we should use this equation right here. Does that make sense? So that means then we're going to be finding it. So find uh, this. Oh, we're also going to need to know the temperature. The temperature, um, well, let's see, so I'll just write this down. So that means we're going to use this 3 halves times N times KB times T. We're going to use this version. All right, well, we need to know the temperature, but uh, so I'll maybe write this down. So we need temperature. All right. So if we want that right there, well, we have the temperature in degrees Celsius, true, but we need it in Kelvin. So don't forget that, then. We're going to need to actually convert this, right? We're going to need to write this up. So remember that the temperature, we have an equation for this actually in our data booklet, that the temperature in Kelvin equals the temperature in Celsius plus 273. So that means, then, I can say, ah, okay, that means my temperature, then, in Kelvin which is what I need, is going to be equal to, let's see, it's going to be minus 45, whoops, minus 45, plus 273. Well, that means then it's just going to be, let's see, temperature in Kelvin is just going to be, uh, what's that, 228, yeah, 228 Kelvin. Okay, so that's a piece then that I'm going to need, isn't it? This is the piece of here I'll need into here. So finally then, I'll just put it all together. So U equals 3 halves. So I'll just write down everything I'm going to need on my calculator here. Times the number of molecules. So it's 1 times 10 to the 30. Okay, good. Then I need the Boltzmann's constant. Don't worry, I can look it up, right? So that's 1.38 times 10 to the minus 23. So 1.38 times 10 to the minus 23. And don't forget to put your temperature in Kelvin, so 228. All right, well, I'm going to need a calculator for this, and I'll just uh, multiply these. So I'll first start off with a nice pretty fraction. I'll say 3 over 2, and I'll multiply that by, well, 1 times 10 to the 30. All that times 1.38 times 10 to the minus 23, and all that times uh, 228. I end up with an answer then of 1.719 times 10 to the 9. Wait, was it 1? No. 4.719, there we go, 4.719 times 10 to the 9. 
So that means then I can say, well, I'm probably allowed uh, two significant figures here, so I'll say 4.7, I'll say approximately equal to 4.7 times 10 to the 9 joules. Of course, I can call these gigajoules if I wanted to. I mean, there's a lot of ways I can do it, but there we go. There's the internal energy of this gas. So do you see what we've just learned about? We've just learned about internal energy, the equation for it, and how we can actually use it to calculate. So just the last little piece, just to point out here, just so we make sure we understand here, maybe I'll write this in red right here. So that means that as, uh, let's do it like this. As temperature goes up, the internal energy goes up. And remember that speed is also that too. So as the speed of the molecules goes up, well then the temperature goes up, that means the internal energy goes up. So just so you know at least, the speed of these molecules also implies that the internal energy goes up. So I think this is sort of a, some important pro tips for you.